Today's video takes us back to the 1970s. Tangerine Dream were the first group to use sequencing extensively in their music. They did for sequencing what Keith Emerson and his group ELP did for the synthesizer, which was to introduce it to a wide audience. Here's a photo of their equipment from the mid-1970s. One of the four cabinet systems was originally purchased by the Rolling Stones. The second system was originally purchased by the Moody Blues. On the top row of this photo, the second cabinet is a Moog Sequencer Complement B portable expansion cabinet. The remaining three cabinets contain a Moog Synthesizer 3C that had been packaged into three portable cabinets. The Moog Synthesizer 3C is a bit more extensive than the System 55 in some regards. It includes a four-channel mixer where the System 55 does not have this. The System 55, though, does include a sequencer and a sequential switch. Also, the 3C has three oscillator banks, whereas the System 55 has only two. This video is focused on the sequencer complement B and its capabilities. There are only five modules in the sequencer complement B. Two 960 sequential controllers, two 962 sequential switches, and one 961 interface. We're going to explore the different combinations and applications of these five modules. First, let's review the basic capabilities of each of the three modules. In the 960 sequencer, there are two main types of outputs, a control voltage and a trigger or gate. This is similar to the output from an analog synthesizer keyboard. The 960 sequencer has three CV outputs, one for each row. It also has trigger gate inputs and outputs for each step. The 962 sequential switch allows you to input up to three signals, typically CVs, for example, from the 960 CV outputs. The selected signal is routed to the output. You can manually select any of these three inputs with these switches. You can also input a trigger, clock, or pulse into the shift input to move to the next input in the sequence. So from here, we would move to here, to here, to here, and then back again. Before we get into the 961 interface, let's briefly review the two trigger or gate types in the System 55. The two trigger types are voltage triggers, or V triggers, and switch triggers, or S triggers. A V trigger is off when the voltage is zero or ground. It's on when the voltage is some positive level, typically five volts in a Eurorack system. An S trigger is off when the voltage is non-zero, for example, five volts. It is on when the voltage is zero or ground. The 960 interface module allows you to combine V triggers so that if any of these triggers is on, the output will be on. The output is an S trigger, which is required by the System 55 envelope generators. In logic terms, the interface module acts as an OR gate for S triggers. And to show you that routing here, we have S trigger out into a malt and into the S trigger inputs of the envelopes. So that's our quick review of the capabilities of the three types of modules in the sequencer complement B. Now let's see how they interact. Let's look at the destinations for the CVs and the gates. There are a number of destinations for the CV outputs. Frequency control of the VCO, i.e. pitch. 
cutoff frequency control of the VCF, i.e. timbre, gain level of a VCA, i.e. volume, also any other control voltage input on the modular is fair game for the output of the 960 sequencer control voltages. The most obvious destination for a trigger gate is an envelope generator. Other common destinations include different inputs on the 960, such as the step gate inputs to reset to a particular step. Use of one or more of the step outs to shift other 960 sequencers or 962 sequential switches, effectively a clock divider. VCF or VCA inputs for accents. You'll probably want to route the gate through an attenuator if you do this. We've been talking module features and techniques so far. Let's exploit some of this theory. First, let me note that I'm using a digital delay which is built into the mixer that I'm using. This effect is essential for the Berlin School sound. Second, I'm using a quantizer on the CV outputs from the 960 to make it easier to tune each step. Let's listen real briefly to the digital delay and the difference it makes to have it on versus off. first setup we have is the single 960 sequencer, 962 sequential switch, and 961 interface. The top 960 sequencer is routed to a mini Moog base patch on the System 55. Rows 1 and 2 are tuned as pitch sequences for this voice. The CVs are routed through the 962 sequential switch. I'll be switching manually between the eight step sequences. Row three CV is routed to the filter cutoff to create accents. And I can control how many volts are output by that CV with this range switch. Initially, the gate will come from the clock output of the second 960 sequencer. We also have selected gate outputs routed to the 960 interface. I'll manually change the gate from the clock output to the 961 section with the step outputs. So let's listen to that. We'll reset, 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 and that's reset. bottom sequencer is controlling a second voice which is in the last row in the case. Sequencer rows 1 and 2 are tuned as pitch sequences for this voice. They create a melody or counterpoint to the bass voice. I'm routing the CVs through the 962 sequential switch. I'm also shifting the switch output with the step gate output from step one. This will create a 16 step sequence. Row three is being used for filter accents. So let's listen to that. Note that I can route other step gate outputs to a step input to change the length of the sequence. I can do this manually, but I have a four position switch patch so that I can easily select the following sequence lengths. Eight steps, four steps, six steps, seven steps. Note that I can set the skip normal stop switch to stop and it will stop shifting, but the envelopes will still trigger. Finally, I can manipulate 
the envelope parameters on the second voice to create dynamic sounds. And I'll do this right here with the time of the envelope and also the sustain level. The next capability I want to discuss is the fact that there is a switch here that will allow you to route the output of row 3 into the control voltage input of the clock on this sequencer. And by doing that, you can create rhythms rather than just having a steady stream of eighth notes produced by the clock. So. I'm going to turn off this sequence. We're only going to listen to this sequence. I'm also going to turn off the digital delay so that we can hear clearly what's going on. So this is the sequence without this internal clock routing. Another technique that's common with two sequencers is to use one sequence for the main melody and use a second sequence to transpose the whole sequence being produced here. So you could take the output of CV1 and sum it with the output from this sequencer. What you'd want to do is take the output of step one and use that for your shift over here on the upper sequencer so that every time it did eight steps it would increment one step up here and then you could use these knobs to control the root note with each of the steps on the upper sequencer. There are many other possibilities with the complement B sequencer package originally from Moog. That wraps up the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.